All right, so more of that um, blues, jazz blues in A. Um, <clears throat> and and we'll talk about the rhythm part, the, the chords. So we had this for a one chord. Basically, your one chord is A7, or of course, you know, an A9 or an A11 or an A. Um, any extended uh, dominant seventh chord or dominant chord rather. So uh, there's A7 that we were doing. We were doing it in this voicing, which is from the E shaped bar chord or E7 shaped bar chord at the fifth fret. And instead of fretting the whole thing, we were just doing open A string and then first finger barring. It can either be the top fourth strings or just the D, G, and B string. The second finger gets the major third there, with the G string, sixth fret. And that'd be a very typical thing to do that. <clears throat> Resolving from flat third to major third, that's fifth fret to sixth fret on the G string. Anyway, we had something like. And then we we're going to the fourth chord, that's that. Uh, nine chord shape with the root on the A string and that's D9 there at the fifth fret and then back to the one chord and then and that's uh, A7 in the D7 shape at frets 7, 9, 8, 9 and that's just taking the major third off the top string and putting the second or the nine there instead And then you could go back to your four chord as a nine, and then we'll just we'll just go back to your uh, your four chord that is D seven in the A seven shape five seven five seven five on the top five strings, and then you add a second finger in this case to the A string, one fret up from the root of that shape, so sixth fret, and that gives you um, D sharp diminished, which is a nice lead up or lead back to the one chord. And then when you get to that one chord, because you've got this movement on the A string, this bass movement of D, D sharp, you could emphasize the fifth of the one chord at first, and then go back to the root of the one chord. So seventh fret A string, and then um, that's what we were doing today in the lesson. Uh, that's your E7 shape bar chord. So you're using the full shape now because. Uh, shall I use a pick or we weren't using a pick? It doesn't really matter. If you're not using a pick, you tend to um, pick with your fingers the root of the chord, whether that's on the E string or the A string. And the th uh, first three fingers would pluck the D, G, and B strings. So we have that, so you're just moving down chromatically, fret 5, 4, 3, 2, to F sharp at the second fret, and then once I get there, I'm plucking, like I said, the root on the low E, and then the D, G, and B strings, that's one voicing, I could have done that, or I just tended to do, I just happened to do this. That bit is me moving my fingers from strings D, G, and B to the top three strings, G, B, and E. And then back to strings D, G, and B. Or just pluck the top three strings and hammer on to get that voicing. That's the little finger on the fifth fret of the B string, giving you the flat seven of the F sharp seven chord. And then we can get this nice movement of, so I've gone to the six, this is the one. Uh, 
one going down to the six. Now the six goes to the two. I've made dominant seven of all these chords, as often happens in a jazz blues. So there's my two chord. I mean, I could do a B minor seven, but I'm going to do a B dominant seven at the moment. So notice that movement on the B string. That's fifth fret B string when we're on the F sharp seven. 4th fret B string when we're on the B7, the 2 chord, then we go to the 5 chord, which is E7, and we got 3rd fret B string, and then we're back at the 1 chord, which is A7, I'm doing an open voicing as you can see, and then I'm on fret 2 of the B string, so I've gone, I've got that chromatic movement of... Six, two, five, one. Yeah. And that is just rolling the chord there when I got to about I'm on the A seven and just rolling that is picking with the thumb and then doing that movement of the wrist just turning out the wrist with my three fingers resting on the strings D G and B strings and then I'm picking the top E string open and then putting in the six there which is the second fret of the top E string and then taking my two fingers on the B and E strings third and fourth finger taken up to the fifth fret which is the top of that voicing of A, yeah, the E shape, or A7. Um, that was just an idea then, you don't have to do that. The main thing was this 6-2, um, sorry, this 1-6-2-5. Um, just top E string open, um, hammering on and pulling off on the second fret which gives you the six and then back to the five and then third fret the top E string is the flat seven. Okay so that was the main thing that we were looking at, well, well one of the main things we were looking at and then when you're um, looking for different chord voicings or when you're just looking at chord voicings and close chord voicings look for similar patterns in the chords and look to see what moves the least because that will give you powerful lead voicings in the chords when you're changing chords so for example when you're on the one chord and you've got this voicing which is from the so I'm on a7 in the E7 shape, and I've got open A string, then five, six, sorry, in terms of frets, five, six, five on the D, G, and B strings. Yeah, so in terms of the chord, root, flat seven, major third, and fifth. Yeah. Now, if I'm using this voicing, made a point in the lesson that if you just take that very same shape up one fret and um, stroke the low E string what you have there is an E7 flat 9 so that E7 flat 9 remember uh, this is a 5 chord in, in this um, in this 12 bar blues the E7 is a 5 chord and what does a 5 chord do? It's about tension and you can't have more tension than a semitone apart and that's what your 5 chord is. There's your 1 chord in terms of frets 5, 6, 5 and then your 5 chord is the same shape just moved up 1 fret so that means everything went up 1 semitone and so that's going to give you the most tension in relation to 
that, and so it's going to give you the most tension and release in relation to your one chord. So come back. So five one. Anyway, you can look out for those shapes that um, for similarities, shapes that stay the same but just move up a fret or not move much. Um, if I just concentrate on the middle two strings in these voicings, there's my root on the A string uh, for my one chord A7. And then I've got on the middle two strings, I've got the fifth fret of the D string giving me the flat seven, the G note, and on the sixth fret of the G string giving me the major third of A, yeah, which is C sharp. So I've got G, C sharp, or flat seven, third of the chord. Now that gives me that shape. Fifth fret, sixth fret on the D and G strings respectively. When I go to the four chord, that shape just moves down one fret to give me. Now they've swapped around the characters. Uh, I mean the the chord tones have actually swapped around. Here, my first finger was giving me the flat seven, and my second finger was giving me the major third in relation to the root being on the E string. Now if I take the shape down one fret and the root of the four chord is on the A string, fifth fret, which is the note D, so I've got a D7 chord here, and now that first finger on the D string is giving me the major third and that second finger is giving me the flat seven. So they swapped around. Here it was flat seven, major third, and then I take it down one fret for the four chord, major third, flat seven, okay? But each of those, you can see it just moves one semitone. So one chord, four chord, one chord, four chord, back to one chord. Yeah. So you can hear it just, you can hear the movement just by moving that figure. And then, so you're back to your one chord, and then just take that figure up one fret, and you've got the major third and flat seven of your five chord, which in this case, or is E7, yeah? So you've got this figure, or this shape, gives you your one four five so this is your one chord this is your four chord d7 back to your one chord a7 and then your five chord that's e7 that's d7 and then you're back to a7 so one chord in the middle if you like four chord take that shape down one fret Back to one chord, take it up one fret for the five chord, then two frets for the four chord, and then back in the middle for your five chord. Look out for shapes that you can just move around because they'd be great, um, great things for not only not only your your rhythm playing. I mean, if you're just doing this by yourself, it's a bit empty. But if you're in a band and you've got a bass player. then you just doing this is absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, so if you've got other players filling out the sound. And then of course you can do, you know, little whatever fills like that or... or find some sort of phrase that you like. And there's your five chord. Um, and yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so look out for um, shapes that you can move around, and they will give you a really solid basis for not just your rhythm playing but lead lines as well.
that sort of thing anyway. And yeah, so I found that movable shape. It, that's on the middle two strings on the D, sorry, on the G and B strings. You got this shape, which is sixth fret G string, eighth fret B string. That gives you, if I'm playing um, this one, four, five and A, there's my one chord A and as it was doing before, the G string 6th fret gives you the major 3rd and now the B string 8th fret gives you the flat 7. And then you move that shape down 2 fret, sorry, you move that shape down 1 fret for your flat 7 and major 3rd of your 4 chord. So 1 chord, 4 chord, 1 chord. And same as before, I move it up, this shape up, one fret. There's E7, flat seven on the G string, seventh fret, major third on the B string, ninth fret. Now what is that? Now I'll have to look that up, it reminds me of something. Uh, so five chord. Chord, one chord, yeah. So yeah, look out for those uh, shapes that just move up or down a fret, or something moves very cl close voicings, basically. Whether it's a two-note shape or just a one-note thing. So if this is my, you know, one chord, and I'm doing this voicing of A7. melody note, it was a flat 7 on the B string 8th fret, and you could really hear the chord change from that 8th fret of the B string to 7th fret of the B string, which was moving from the flat 7 of the 1 chord to the major 3rd of the 4 chord. Okay, God, that's gone on a long time. Okay, hope that helps.